Hey, Paul, how you doing? Yeah, I can't see you on the screen now. Oh, oh, I'll tell Paul you're busy, so I thought I'd call you back on this. There you okay, go. Yeah, yeah. I see you now. Hey, hey uh, um, I just wanted to let you know, are you aware that there are some new PACER documents that were uh, put into PACER in the last few days? Uh, I, you go ahead and tell me what they were. Okay. Um, let me bring them up real quick. No, I'm never, I'm never aware unless somebody tells me. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, give me just a second. Uh, pacer, 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 pacer. There we go. Okay. Okay, I think it starts with 219. Uh, let me bring up 219. Yeah, let me start with 219. Yeah, 219. Uh, it's from this, uh, all of them are, you know, that Christian bias judge, uh, Margaret Casey Rogers. Um, she... Hold on. Uh, there we go. It's uh, The first one is motion request for hearing. And she said that uh, it was denied. All of them are denied. Upon consideration of the foregoing, it is ordered this 13th day of July 2015 that the relief requested is denied. Yeah, okay. Okay, that was motion request for hearing. There's also a... Um, Motion petition for declaratory order that was also denied by uh, the anti-Christian bias judge Margaret Casey Rogers. And then we also have uh, a motion to dismiss or vacate counts five and six. And that was also upon consideration of the foregoing, uh, the relief requested is denied. Yeah, okay. Yeah, she ruled on my... Uh... But I, I do want to send a declaratory... Uh judgment request on her. I sent it on to the head judge of the uh, of the uh, of the district. Okay. I don't know why she's why she's denied. I never sent it to her. Okay. But uh, but, but either way, uh, all, all I asked him was uh, the basic simple questions that uh, the, that Rogers fails to uh, allow me to have an opportunity to uh, have the other force the other side to the evidence. Yeah, uh, such as personal jurisdiction or subject matter jurisdiction or territorial jurisdiction, and um, they, uh, I asked the judge, the head judge of the district, to tell me um, if if that's how I how I could basically get that accomplished. Okay, if, if it's re if it's required, if I if I demand it, I think I, I think I put in three different declaratory requests. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they'll deny all three of them. It looks like so. Yep. You know, there were several documents that were put in Pacer that were written by you, but I didn't mention those because I figured you know about those already. So, um, but they they were yeah, yeah. they were entered in, into Pacer. But I just wanted to let you know about the denied, so uh, to make sure you're aware. Yeah. And uh, we are starting. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Well, the one of the main things I'm trying to drive across is that uh, if I was trying to uh, um, cloud the title, which that's one of the charges. Why did I not mail the see? See, Glenn Stoll mailed a claim of lien to the to the uh, county for recording against the property. It was a dollar short on fee, so they re they mailed it back to me, and then I I just mailed it back to Glenn. I didn't want nothing to do with that stuff. Yeah, and um, if I wanted to. If I, if I was in a mode of wanting to file something, I would have added the dollar to it, and I would have mailed it right back to the court clerk. Right. Which, But I never had anything to do with it in the first place, and I never had anything to do with it in the second place. And all I did is I mailed a copy of that of it to the, uh, the title company attorney. Um, you know, they asked me, they asked me to at least, at least notify the attorney that, uh, of what they're trying to to get on the record yeah and um, anyway it's crazy yeah um, yeah you know you know uh, another thing paul uh, the opposition camp who's always trying to make uh you know they're trying to twist things and pervert the truth they they're doing a hit piece uh and they interviewed this anthony jaworski character and they're making him out to be uh like some sort of victim of the hoven clan and uh i just thought it was terrible I, I, it's hard to put into words 
uh, what they did in this video, but when you get out, you'll see it firsthand. But I tried to give a commentary uh, response to it, but, um, you know, I think Anthony Jaworski is kind of a, if he's a victim of anybody, he's a victim of the government. And he actually complained in the video that if he had known about the property being, uh, you know, part of a pending litigation, he would have never bought it or moved there. He just says that in the video. I'm like, wow, that's amazing that he would say that because that was the whole point of the Liz Pendants, right, is to notify potential buyers of uh, pending litigation. But uh, in any event, uh, you know, he said that he received like six different letters, but he couldn't find all of them. And the, the opposition camp really tried to make him out to be some sort of victim in all this. But he paid cash for the property. Um, and I think there's there's a willing buyers. I mean, I think that if he wants to sell the property well, for what he paid for it, I don't see him being that much of a victim if, he's, if he wants to move out. Uh, I think there's willing buyers. So... I think Pastor Hoven wants to buy the property, is my understanding. I don't know that for sure, but I think he does. So, uh, for, for exactly what uh, Jaworski paid for it. But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because uh, when you get out of prison, you might want to see that video and see the twist and all the propaganda that the opposition camp puts out, you know? Yeah, the, the number one thing is that they never, that Kent had never had a duty to withhold any taxes from any of this creation science evangelism workers. It's the whole. This whole thing pivots on that. We're, right. we're going to have every person involved that ever made that claim that he had that duty, we're going to have them in a witness stand, and we're going to have a, a People's Community Court, which is which is Seventh Amendment Court in the U.S. Constitution. We're going to make them support their claim that they, they actually processed that one time that actually ended Kent up in jail for, for 10 years. And uh, they're going to have to make that claim or they're going to have to go go all the way back and, and, right. and correct all their errors right. ever since that. Right. There, there's no way they're going to get away from that because the the, the, the American court is the people. Yeah. It's not the United States. It's not the United States. The United States is a tool that the people allows to operate for military purpose. The American court is the people. Yeah, amen. Amen. Amen, Paul. It's, it's it's superior. It's superior to any any uh, U.S. court. Yeah, we got we got plenty of case law on that. Yeah, amen, amen. Also, to let you know, uh, some of the social media is taken off about your particular case, and a phrase that's really really catching on is uh, you know, free Paul Hansen, but associated with that is jailed for mail, <laughs> right? It's like that's that's how bad the situation is. Is that you're looking at some serious jail time for a. a a silly letter, which is the most insane thing in the world. So just to let you know that jail for mail really seems to be catching on. And uh, there are a lot of people that are paying attention to this case. And uh, we're trying to promote, you know, your, your situation as much as possible. A lot of us think it's absolutely ludicrous that you're in prison right now. And I, I, I still haven't seen a sentencing date. I guess you haven't heard of one either, right? We don't know when your next sentencing date's going to be? Yeah. No, it'll probably... It'll probably be told this week, and then it might have to be in another 30 days from now or another two weeks. Yeah. Uh, another thing to consider is the uh, United States government hasn't even sold the last of the properties. Yeah. So they were so concerned about my letter encumbering them. Yeah. They haven't even sold the rest of the properties. Right. It didn't encumber it's, anything. It's, it's, no, my letter didn't. My letter didn't encumber anything. It right. wasn't even intended to. Right. My letter wasn't intended right. to. That's right. Um, all it was is exactly what the what the courts said that we have an absolute right to do. We have an absolute right to do anything that 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 might uh, be used to aid us in aid, uh, eventually going into litigation. Right. And every letter, every letter that went to Jaworski was written so that when we do go to court, we have a, a trail of of a claim, right, and a wrong that was done to us. And uh, we have, we have, we're trying to notice people of the injustice, not that we're trying to do, but the injustice of what the United States IRS has already done. Amen. These, amen. these people, these people, some, some administrators, some judges, some uh, U.S. prosecutors, some IRS agents, we will be able to show in that community court, it's just a common law court, We've been having a, the, the court is, is legit. It, it, it's the same standing as the other courts, same operation, same same rooms, same processes. 
we're going to actually show that they conspired against Kent. Yeah. That they conspired against him. Yeah, amen. That they knew, they knew he was not guilty of any crime, and they went ahead and conspired against him, including his own attorney, and sent him to jail for 10 years when they knew he did not violate a single law because he had no duty whatsoever in any way at all to withhold money from those workers and turn it over to the government for the United States. No duty at all. Amen. No, I totally agree with you, Paul. Absolutely. They absolutely conspired against him, and it's just a tremendous uh, injustice that's been done. And and everything rests on uh, what law did they rely upon uh, that Ken Hoven had to uh, withhold those taxes from those contract workers, and there is no law. And so everything falls apart after that. Everything that's happened after that falls apart, and uh, you're absolutely right. And it's just a matter of time, Paul. I mean, justice will prevail. Um, and there, is a, there, is a, there is a law. Okay. There is a law, but there, there is not a single... There's not a single person in the IRS that will testify that that law applied to Ken Hoven at that location. I see. They will not. We will put them in the witness chair, and we hope to have a camera on them so that all American, all America can see a uh, United States IRS agent testify. Yeah. And he will testify. We've had IRS in, in the court stand many, many times. He will testify that he has found no law that required Ken Hoven to withhold any taxes yeah. at that location yeah. with that uh, with that business, yeah. no law at all. Yeah, very That's good. That's going to be the way it's going to pan out. Yeah, amen. And the whole world's going to look at this IRS agent and say, "Why did you not come forward in 2006 and stop Kent from going to jail?" Yeah, you know what he's going to say? Well, nobody asked me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. That's insane to ruin a man's life for nine years, uh, you know, and refuse to do the right thing. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Well, very good, Paul. Uh, is there anything, uh, anything we can do uh, while we got you on the phone? I wanted to make sure you're aware of those orders from the, the Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, who I consider the mo one of the most anti-Christian judges I've ever seen in my life. But um, I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm continuing. Well, she's, we, I, I, I believe that we can actually bring her into the court setting also because she's she's simply an administrator of law, and we could we could show that. She, she. We, I believe we could show that she did know. I, I believe that we can show that she should have known, and uh, that uh, Ken had no duty to withhold taxes from those people. Yeah, amen. I, I believe we could. I believe we could convince the jury that she conspired against Ken. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that day. <laughs> I really am because she, uh, she's really done a number on uh, the Hoven family and you and. Uh, I think she is part of a conspiracy to come against Ken Hoven, and I think it was probably ordered from you know even higher than herself. So, um, but you know he's yeah. gonna, he's going to work on overturning his first case, and I think justice will prevail. He's not going to give up, and uh, we're not going to give up on getting you out of there. We're going to continue to try to raise public awareness about what's going on in your situation. Um, so, yeah, I believe I believe uh, those people that I named off. I believe they they won't even show up for court. <laughs> They, yeah. they won't even show up for court because yeah. they, they know that it that they it'll only get worse for them. Yeah, they're, they're very fact that they don't want to walk across the street and go to court for for uh, for an hour. Yeah, even though Ken goes to jail, gets sentenced to jail for ten years. Yeah, and they're trying they try to give us twenty years each in this case easily, um, and they don't want to walk across the street for a couple of hours and set the record yeah. straight when yeah. the people demand them to yeah. uh, require them to show up into court. And be, yeah. and be under under uh, under oath to tell the truth. No, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Paul. Uh, Tiffany Hope Eggers, IRS Agent Scott Snyder, uh, IRS Agent Charles Evans, Judge Margaret Casey Rogers. All of them. All of them are poor excuses uh, for human beings, in my opinion. And that's just, that's the nicest way I can say it. I mean, they they the way that they've acted has just been an incredibly uh, atrocious. And it's been a huge uh, travesty of justice that's been carried out, not only in Kent's case, but your case. You've been in, in prison since uh, October, and uh, there's no reason for you to be in prison. I mean, you should have been out of there. You should have never gone to prison. And so, uh, I, 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 you know, the world that we live in is just upside down, Paul. I, I, we're going to do what we can to make people aware of your case, but um, I just think we live in an upside down world right now, and I can't wait for the Lord to come back and straighten it all out. <laughs> well, the, uh, what, what's going to happen here? Because we're going to show the world that they're trying to put me in jail for six months, six years. Yeah. 
six years for mailing this letter to a title company that just simply said that we believe that we have a legal interest in this property and we don't want no more Jaworskis getting in, getting in between a hard spot and a rock. Yeah. That's why we're sending you this. Right. And we're going to show them that they're trying to, we're going to show the world that they're trying to put us in jail for a total of, uh, it'd be uh, 20, 30 years. Yeah. 30 years they're trying to give us. Yeah. And, and guess what? <laughs> they are the ones that violated the law. Yeah, amen. They are the ones. Yeah, amen. Amen, you're absolutely right. I can't wait for the Lord to straighten this out because it's a big mess right now. So well, guess uh, what? Yep. You know what? The, you know what the common law court can do <laughs> during that common law court hearing. You can have a minister come in, a specialist in the scriptures. Amen. I like that idea. A, a, a theologian. Amen. And he can show he can show the jury what the punishment should be. Yeah. And you know what the punishment should be? The Bible says what they were trying to give us. Yeah. They shall receive. Yeah, amen, amen. Guess what? Yeah, they're gonna get. That's Scott Schneider's gonna get ten years in jail. <laughs> that's what his testimony was trying to give Ken. Yeah. That's what they got. That's what he gave him. You know, hey, that's only fair. There are some people that I've heard that he should get four times the time that he's tried to put on you and Kent. He should get four times that that penalty. And uh, you know, it's just absolutely. If we could, if, yeah, if we could show without a doubt that he knew. Yeah. And I believe we can. I yeah. believe we can. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Paul. I agree, and uh, justice will prevail, brother. And uh, we're gonna, yep. yeah, we're, we're gonna keep uh, promoting the situation and not, not ever forget. I know uh, now that Kent's out, his his voice will be even be more and more powerful too, because uh, he's not limited by the prison system anymore. So, um, you know, he's he's still getting acclimated with his family, and you know, he's still, you know, he's 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 playing grandpa this week, right? Every time uh, I hear him on the phone, I hear the grandchildren in the background. So he's still getting acclimated with his family, but. I know that um, his voice will become more and more powerful as uh, you know as he uh, you know spends more and more time out of prison. But we're, we're going to continue to this jailed for jailed for mail seems to be getting a lot of traction because that really explains your situation that you're facing serious prison time. You've already spent what is it now like uh, October, November, December, and then you're up to July. So that's uh, like nine months. Nine months in prison. Yeah, nine, months. Yeah. nine months for mailing a letter. It's just absurd. It's the most absurd thing I've ever heard of. So, um, if you need anything, you gotta, yep. But you got to remember, I've received death threats. Yeah. I, I've had attorney, attorneys contact me that they sat in the midst of judges and told him. Now, an attorney contacted me anonymously through another another lawyer. He told him that Mr. Hansen is going to be sent to prison and he's going to be killed in prison because of his damage that he's doing to the U.S. system. Wow. Because he's the exposure the exposure that he's producing to the U.S. system. Wow. I'm not, the, the exposure is very small in this case. I'm, just, I'm exposing other things. But I've been told, this, this attorney just to not, notify this guy I was working with, this lawyer I was working with, and he said he sat in a in a hearing where judges were talking about we're gonna we're gonna try to figure out how to get Hanson in prison <laughs> and we're gonna have him killed. Wow! Yeah, I've talked to people. I've talked to people in prison. You can have people killed for a hundred bucks easily in prison. Yeah, easily, yeah. no problem at all. A hundred bucks, your guy will be dead. Yeah, that's that's it's and that, that's why the Bible says do not set up prison systems. Right, they're right. evil. Amen. Amen. They're evil. Amen. Amen. Yeah, uh, uh, Pastor Hoven talks often about how the prison system is not biblical whatsoever, and so we need a we need to have biblical justice in it, you know. Uh, and it does not include the prison system. So we're trying to promote his book, you know, the Kennel as well, so that it kind of exposes. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what the you know what the Bible says that if I did something wrong here, what I'm supposed to do? I'm supposed to pay restitution for the delay of selling the property. Right. Guess, yeah. Guess what? Yeah. The big delay that they were so concerned about. Yeah. They haven't even sold the property. They still haven't it's sold been, it. It's been months and months and months. Right. It's been 10 months and they haven't even sold the property. Yeah. Been, what, yeah. What, what, my letter that I sell, mailed, was that was that two years ago? In 2012 yeah. or 13 or something? Right. They still haven't sold those properties. Right. Haven't even tried. And, yeah. our, and, and my, my letter never did create a cloud. Yeah. A cloud is something that you go through a process to remove. They've never had to go through a process to remove anything because of my simple little letter to that attorney that 
we still have a legal interest in this property and and um, you, you, the people that are going to buy this property should be aware of that should consider that we don't want we don't want another Jaworski right you know what you know what the government has so much confidence in selling that property to Jaworski you know what they made him do they made him sign a document that they weren't going to be responsible for nothing wow yeah nothing yeah nothing yeah. so they took advantage of this of this mentally retarded mentally deficient person he, I don't yeah. know if he had a stroke or something. Yeah. The government took advantage of him. Yeah. Guess what? You know what they did to the other buyers? Yeah. They guaranteed their warrants, their yeah. warranties. But with Mr. Jaworski, no, he's he's mentally deficient. Let's not give him a a, 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 a warranty deed. Yeah. Let's just give him a deed. Yeah. We're not going to guarantee nothing to Mr. Warren, Mr. Mr. Uh, Jaworski. Yeah. You know Jaworski, whatever his name was. It's Mr. Jaworski, Anthony Jaworski. Let, let me say this, Paul. If if you want to really evaluate who tried to treat Anthony Jaworski fair, it was uh, it was the mailing of the Lewis pendants that would have notified Anthony Jaworski that there's pending litigation, right? That was treating Mr. Jaworski in a very fair manner because it was trying to say, any potential buyer, we want you to be aware of the fact that there's pending litigation. So, But when, when, when Ken Hovind mailed that Lewis pendants, they tried to put him in prison for the rest of his life, so it was the government who was hiding all of the fact, right, that there was potential pending litigation. You're absolutely right, Paul. It's the government that's acted in a very, uh, you know, very deceptive way, and they've treated Anthony Jaworski in the, in the bad way. They, they're the ones who deceived him and tried to take advantage of him, and yet uh, you've got the opposition camp. I don't know what their motives are, but when they make, uh, when they make these videos with Anthony Jaworski, they never paint the government in a bad light. They always try to paint uh, the Hoven clan and you in a bad light. Like, you guys are the bad guys. But you guys are just simply fighting to get your property back, and you were trying to notify Anthony, hey, you need to be aware of the fact that there's pending litigation, but all of a sudden, you know, you're in prison, and, and uh, Pastor Hoven, they tried to put him in prison for the rest of his life. So it's just atrocious what's going on here, Paul, and uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep, you know, uh, making noise and shining light, just like Gideon's army, brother, and we ain't going to forget about you. And it, you know, I don't know what's going to happen out of this. I pray God does another mighty miracle and somehow gets you out of there. But I don't know how Tiffany Hope Eggers, Scott Schneider, and Charles Evans, and Judge Margaret Casey Rogers, I don't know how they go to sleep uh, at night. And when they go to sleep and they put their head on their pillow, it's like, well, you're still stuck in prison. For what? You haven't done anything. You didn't cloud any title. Like you said, you didn't. they didn't have to do anything to remove a cloud. Right, and so they go to bed every night in, in their homes, and they stuck you in prison. And for what? You're not a danger to society. You haven't done anything wrong. You haven't uh, stolen any property. You haven't deceived anybody. You weren't guilty of mail fraud. Uh, so it's I, I, I don't know what to do, Paul, other than just keep uh, making a lot of noise and shining a lot of light. And uh, we 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 love you, brother, and we want you out of that prison. I, I, yeah. What's going to happen here? See, these people don't realize that they're they're dealing with. The internet has connected uh, people like me and Kent yeah. to hundreds of people that have gone to law school. They know history. See, normally uh, people would go into a U.S. court and the U.S. judge would kick you out of there faster than you can imagine. Yeah. They would have a thousand reasons why you can't bring in the IRS agent. You can't bring in Mrs. Rogers. You can't bring in the uh, prosecuting attorney. They'd have a thousand reasons why you can't. But guess what? In the common in the in the common law, court of record, Seventh Amendment, there is no U.S. judge that can stop them. Yeah, they are scared to death of that court. Yeah. Guess what? If you're prosecuting that case, you can say, "I want light on this. I yeah. want a camera in here. Yeah. I want audio. I want the whole world to see what's going on in here." And nobody can re nobody can die deny them of that because it's their case. Yeah, it's their case. Yeah, why don't you want the camera on you when you're sworn under oath? Of, Amen. Under oath to tell, tell the truth. How come you don't want that? How come you don't want people to hear the questions that I'm going to yes. stand there and ask them? Right. The more people that hear it, the better. Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, the uh, the truth is the reason they don't want those now. The people are going to say now. Why doesn't she answer that question? Why right. doesn't he answer that question? Now I'm going to have time in front of the in the in the. In front of the jury, I'm going to explain why they don't want to answer the question. Yeah, I'll even tell them why they don't want to answer the question before I answer the question. <laughs> right. The jury's, going to be, the jury's not going to be falling asleep. They're going to be sitting on the edge. They're right. going to be in a, in a position. They're, they're they're making history right in front of them. Right. Right. Are you telling me that the IRS is 
has committed this tremendous fraud. Yeah. I'm not telling you they committed this tremendous fraud. I'm, I'm saying this is something they do daily. Yeah. Daily. Amen. So. Amen. And uh, uh, I'm trying to think who said that. But I think Ronald Reagan, he said if he understood uh, some of the implications of, for just the, just the Federal Reserve, yeah. that there would be a rebellion in the morning. Right. Very very few people understands, understand the, um, the injustice that the Federal Reserve can impose on a society. And the same things for the IRS. They don't understand. They think the IRS there is so that we can we have a strong defense that we uh, we don't uh, we we got a military we got we got all these uh, veterans we got to pay their pensions to. That's all a lie. Yeah. If you understand what the IRS is doing, it, it is there for it's it's for the Federal Reserve. Yeah. That's where all the money that the IRS collects, all of it, every penny goes to the Federal Reserve. Yeah. It's organized crime. Yeah, amen, amen, amen. Now, if you get into a public position and you and you get power and you start disclosing that, they will kill you. Yeah. They will right. kill you. They yeah. will either kill you uh, financially or they'll kill you socially or politically. Yeah, assassination territory. Or else they'll kill you. If they have to, they'll kill you uh, physically. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. But they will kill you. They will kill you. Yeah. Hey, hey, Paul, have you ever, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but have you ever heard of a book called uh, The Creature from Jekyll Island by J. Edward Griffin? Yes, yes, and it's, uh, it's an excellent book. Uh, the Federal Reserve System uh, is, is the main topic in that book, and they, they, every nation has been uh, approached to get that system going. Most nations use it. Most nations that refuse to use it, guess what? Their leaders are assassinated. Yeah. They, their leaders are assassinated until they start using it. Right. Then all of a sudden, the assassinations quit. Right, right. It's a it's a tremendous financial uh, hold on the entire world. Yeah, they will spend billions, billions on a nation to destroy it, so that they can get them in an altered position to where they take on the Federal Reserve. Yeah, yeah. It's it's wicked. You know, it's absolutely wicked. You're absolutely this is right. what the United States IRS system is associated with. Yeah, that's who. Yeah, they work together. They're they're the same entity. Yeah, people don't know that. Wow, Do your research people quit going to the stupid basketball game and stay home and read a book. Amen, amen. You know, I often hear uh, the Federal Reserve. It's referred to as the most uh, evil institution on planet Earth. The Federal Reserve. Would you? Yes, it's organized. It's organized crime. Yeah, it's um, it it can be. It could be used for good. Yeah, if they if they chose to. And they did start out that way. Yeah. Guess what? As soon as the uh, the uh, people in power realize the control that that thing has, they they, they put a nation in debt of seventeen trillion dollars. That's right. what the Federal Reserve has done. Right. We don't have to. You know, guess what, people? We don't have to pay off the principal on seventeen trillion dollars. Yeah. We only have to pay off the interest that it that it creates. Yeah. Guess what? You know why we don't have to pay off the tr the principal? Because there was no principal. Yeah. It was created credit in society. Yeah. It's it's theft. It's getting it's the government's getting something for nothing. Yeah, you're absolutely they right. They love it. They love it during wartime because they can win the war that way. Yeah. But the rest of the time, it's a leech on society. Amen. I, I don't know. We got to somehow. We got to. You know, I, I just can't wait for the Lord to come back because I don't see any other any other way this whole system getting corrected. Paul, we're getting down to our last minute, brother. Uh, anything. You you want to anything you want to say in the last minute? A uh, message for you know uh, me. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, okay. I, uh, we need to correct the system one square foot at a time. Just do it in the front yard. Yeah. Do it in your backyard. Then ask yeah. your neighbor to do it. Yeah. And then the neighbor after that. And the sooner or later, the neighbors are going to start noticing. Hey, we can actually change this thing around. That's how it works. Hey, you don't man. have to have the whole United States turn around. You just just do it in your do it in your family. Do it in your community. Mm, amen. Do it where, where you stand. Do what you can. Amen. Well, Paul, you've, you've proven that you don't bow. Uh, you know, when they came after you, you haven't bowed the knee to bail. And uh, I appreciate the example you've set for us, brother. I, I wish there were more men in our country like you. Okay, here's the motto. Where you stand, do what you can. I love it. T-shirt. Where you stand, do what you can. I love it. Yep. I'll okay, let, I'll let you go. Okay, God bless you, Paul. There'll, there'll be more money on the account, and I'll, I'll let you know if any other updates come into Pacer. Okay, thank you. Okay, God bless. Okay, bye. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>